What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. So I've been getting some questions about the uh, the new type of training I'm doing, and it uh, it leads, or it has been led to believe to me by someone I can't remember who sent me the article, but there's something similar that I kind of stumbled upon that has been labeled myo reps, which the occlusion training kind of led me to adopt this new philosophy to try to. Um, to not develop something new, but actually take the occlusion off and continue the type of training that I was doing. And I said, okay, let me try this with a back exercise, which was um, one arm chest supported rows. And what I did was I did, essentially it's just like the occlusion training. So, excuse me, I'll shorten the range of motion, elongate the range of motion, and use different ranges of motion within the one set to try to get the muscles to fatigue faster. Once I get to total failure on that one part of the set, because I'll count this whole thing as one set. I'll put the weight down, rest, about five, ten seconds, continue again to get as many reps as I can, put it down, rest, and again. So it's like a rest pause. True rest pause would be max rep, racket, weight, unrack it, one rep, racket. That's true rest pause. This is like multiple rep rest pause until I get to the point where I just literally cannot move it anymore. And the idea is I've been looking for something to not get bigger, not get stronger to try to maintain my size while saving my joints. Now, I did go to the massage therapist this week. I had some work done on my mid-trap, which, funny enough, I actually pulled my mid-trap by sneezing. Yeah, that's how you know you're getting old. When you pull a muscle sneezing, you're getting old. So I went to the massage therapist. She uh, worked on that part. She actually found another tear in my pec near the insertion over here where the tendon is. As soon as she got to it, she said, Man, there's a lot of scar tissue. Like, you can literally feel it. It is, and she's right, it's different on both sides to where this one has a tear and it's got scar tissue. And she said, you know, if you had pushed too hard, you would have tore that off the tendon. So it's a good thing I stopped benching because I tore it down here where it has a defect. And now I find out that I have a partial tear up here, which has a lot of scar tissue, which is limiting the range of motion and hurting it. So now I'm saying, okay, look, my body's telling me, look, all this heavy training, it's done. It, my body just doesn't want to do it. In the future, maybe, hopefully... You know, not hopefully, but maybe it'll be able to to go ahead and start training heavy again, which, you know, I miss. But at the same time, there's got to be a way to maintain size without having to use those poundages that are going to put the stress on my joints. The occlusion training was working really good. So now I thought, like, well, you can't use occlusion training for your back or your shoulders or your traps or, you know, you can't use it for the pecs. So how am I going to try to simulate the occlusion training without using the occlusion straps? And that's what I came up with. Do the same amount of, uh, of the same rhythm, the same amount of volume, maybe a little bit higher volume, but try to keep the blood into the, the muscle as much as possible by still going to failure at the same time where you're stimulating those, those type 2 fibers, but not overtraining at the same time. So you have to have the volume right. At the same time, you have to make sure that the muscle's full. So that led me to these things where I said, okay, let me try this. And as soon as I put the video out, I had people email me and say, look, I think this myo reps thing is pretty similar. And it was based on people that were doing a deload they used it for to maintain their, their gains during a deload, which is something similar, but this is something a little bit different than that. So it's kind of my own thing. And it's inspired by occlusion, inspired by myo reps, but it's still a little bit different. I figured while I'm doing this, why don't I just film it while Carrie was in the gym the other day training. We were training at the same time. So if I have her there, I might as well film it and put it up since I've got any questions about it. Now, it's only a 40-pound easy curl. And what you'll see is you'll see me shorten the range of motion and elongate the range of motion. You use different ranges of motion during the exercise itself. And as I start to fatigue, you'll see me go to about a partial rep to where there's no full contraction on it. That's where it's actually fatiguing, where I can't bring it past that point. Which means when I squeeze it, it stops there. It won't go any further. I'm not stopping it there on purpose. It won't go any further. So this is, I only do one set like this straight through so it's four parts to one set so it's like four rounds within one set to failure and then i'm done with arms i do a couple of poses so you guys can see i'm 240 pounds and uh i just figured i would put up you know so you guys can see that and also got a couple of haters going well jerry why don't you stay lean year round and they i just want to show you guys you know what at 240 pounds i'm still lean so here's the mile reps you guys tell me what you think about it as far as i can hear it already you're gonna be like jerry it's such a pussy but you're such a pansy but my arms are still almost 20 inches so Training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is the blog and where here's my 40 pound curl bicep and we're out.